Yes, Gawa. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the cam slave feed to length. Another very, uh, very handy block that we've used a couple of times in the field. So <clears throat> what this is used for is with one-way cams to align the, the slave profile with a registration mark. So it doesn't actually do a feed to length in itself. Really what this block does is registration for cams. And the cam motion here is often continuous. A typical application might be a, a a film feed or some type of conveyor synchronization where you're synchronizing pockets together, something that's kind of constantly moving. And uh, how you use this is you place it in parallel with the normal cam function blocks. Okay, so you're going to calculate your cam, you're going to have cam in functions, maybe a shift function, all that kind of um, code to run your application. And then this runs in parallel with that to keep it in registration. And all the user needs to do is to define the nominal product size, like the ideal product size, and a registration distance, or what we call a distance after latch, that um, the cam profile should end that distance after the sensor is reached. There is other input, uh, or there are other input parameters for the maximum correction per product. So we have a uh, uh, a max positive correction and a max negative correction. Uh, it's not good to make too big of a jump typically in a real application. Valid latch signal locations. That comes in in the sensor minimum and sensor maximum. Uh, we don't we want to restrict the place where a good uh, sensor signal is to be found. And then if we do miss latches, uh, we want to alert the system. So if your printing dries out, your registration marks disappear, sensor gets knocked out of alignment, something like that. Something's wrong with the process and you're making bad product. So you want to know when that happens so you can stop the process. And we do that with our mislatched limit and then a mislatched output. <clears throat> and speaking of outputs, uh, the block also puts out the actual measured size. So if you had a nominal six inch product and in between the marks it said, well, it was really 5.9, It'll put out 5.9, um, which you can do various things with. You can use it just to display on the screen. I've seen people do some averaging of that, recalculating a cam profile to try and uh, get a more nominal cam profile that doesn't quite need as much adjustment all the time. Uh, but this block really um, does a, an excellent job of, uh, of keeping things lined up. We found in practicality people try to do that, but it doesn't matter. It, uh, this block does the job all by itself. So what's inside here? Uh, a couple of simple things. A latch with an MC touch probe and then the check latch position with a slave registration ch check block and then adjust the profile with the Y slave offset. Now why is it a slave offset and not a cam shift? Well that's because it's really we are in control of the product which is a slave to some other master. Okay, um, So we need to use um, the slave offset instead. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at this block <clears throat> inside the cam toolbox. Normally these functions are buttoned up, they're locked, you can't view them. For the purposes of, of this webinar, I've unlocked these so you can see what's inside of them. And uh, so inside our cam slave feed to length, have a simple touch probe that we arm and when we get a uh, signal, then it goes into this slave registration check block and it validates it and then goes to a slave offset and we're done. And then it'll, when the slave offset is done, then it'll go back up here and it'll rearm the latch. <clears throat>